Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the Danark mod for the Caronado Beechcraft 18. I'm sure that many of you will be familiar with the Beech 18, it's an aircraft that we've flown a couple of times here on the channel. Part of the Microsoft Flight Simulator Local Legends series, the Beech 18 as with any Caronado aircraft certainly a very beautiful visual model. It's an aircraft that I've generally personally rather enjoyed in the sim, although of course it's not without its faults and being a Caronado aircraft, fairly lightweight as well on the systems and the flight modelling. The Danark mod certainly looks to change that around though, and whilst typically I don't tend to cover freeware mods here on the channel, this particular mod really rather revolutionises the Beach 18, it's certainly a drastic overhaul, and I've been having a ton of fun with the Beach 18 having installed the mod, so I thought I'd share that with you here today. I've got another superb flight lined up for us, one which I hope of course that you'll enjoy. We're going to be taking the aircraft on a very short run, along the coastline towards the Gorge Valley airstrip, an airstrip which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with at this point. If you're not though then I highly recommend giving the route a go for yourselves, it's a little flight that offers up a really nice challenge and as you'll see hopefully some great fun here as well. We'll obviously touch on the mod along the way as we go, however I did actually get a little bit carried away with this flight, probably didn't cover off quite as much as I was hoping to during the flight itself. So at the end of the video, if you stick around for that we'll cover off a few more details regarding the Danark overhaul. As always ladies and gents I do hope you enjoy the flight, if you do then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. So for today's flight we are back once again in the absolutely superb cockpit of the Caronado Beechcraft 18. Some absolutely beautiful vistas as well once again courtesy of New Zealand's Milford Sound. We're well, hopefully going to have some really good fun with the aircraft here today, certainly we're going to be putting the Beech 18 through its paces and of course the Denart mod as well as we go. As usual we'll carry out a full startup here, I think that's a good way of demonstrating to you some of the unique features of the Denark engine modelling. So for the pre-start checks the cabin door is closed and locked, flight controls are full and free, the landing gear handle is selected down, park brake is set, battery and generator switches can both go on. With the gear indication light we do have down with the green light indicated. Fuel quantities should just be the front left and right tanks that we've got fueled up for the flight today. You can see we've got seven tenths there in both of the front tanks and sure enough there the rear tanks indicating empty as we expected. The fuel selectors they can go through to their respective main tanks so left there on the left front and right there on the right front. For the trims, the elevator trim set neutral, and same there for the rudder trim as well. Flap switch also selected through to the neutral position. Throttles we can open one eighth of an inch in preparation for the start. Mixtures can go through to fully rich. Props are set through to high RPM. Manifold heats are selected cold. All cooler shutters will select through to the hot position here for the start and the warm up. The oil shutoff valves are both selected in. Circuit breakers are checked in there down on the main console and same as well there on the overhead. It is worth noting the circuit breaker is still not modelled on the aircraft. It's really the engine modelling that the Danark mod tends to focus on. Electrical switching, so again just working our way through the console. We'll take the nav lights on. We can take the seatbelt signs on there as well, not that we've got anyone down the back today. And we'll take the beacon on there as well in preparation for the start. The alternate static source is set to normal. The oil bypass valves are both set in. And for the warning lights we have the fuel pressure warning lights there currently as of course we'd expect with the engines not running. And the vacuum pump lights there are currently in operative as per the placard. The start checks then, the boost pumps can go on. I believe the boost pumps are actually a new addition. A recent addition to the mod, if I remember correctly, it was actually two generator switches that we had down here on the default version of the aircraft. So more closely aligned now with the real world checklist. And again, the boost pump can go on. We'll be starting the right hand engine first, so the start selector can go through to the right position. And we'll select the right mags on. As usual, having a good look around, making sure there's no one in the vicinity of the aircraft. Looks to be all clear. Clear prop! And unguarding the starter, we'll hit start. Nice start sounds there on the Beach 18, but that was always the case, even with the default version of the aircraft. 
And as you can see there, the engine didn't actually catch on the first attempt. So again, nice modelling overall as far as the Genart mod goes. We'll hit start again. We do of course have the primer as well if we need to encourage the engine to start, but I find usually on the second attempt the engine will catch and it's a bit tricky juggling everything otherwise. So good start, the oil pressure just coming up just within the uh, red band there. We'll leave the engine idling just below 1000 RPM. Good start there on the right, so the right boost pump can go off. And same process now of course on the left engine. So fuel boost pump is selected on. Engine start selector will now go on to the left. Magnetos are both set on and we'll have another quick glance here over the engine make sure we're all clear and engaging the starter once again no joy there on the first attempt I do tend to find that the second attempt always seems to do the trick so I don't know whether or not the start logic there is a little bit canned and sure enough, good start there on the left. All pressure coming up, we'll leave the engine idling. We can guard up the starter. The start selector can go back through to the neutral position. And we'll get the left boost pump off here as well. Running through the after starts then, the oil pressures are both checked. You'll notice there the left oil pressure just sitting slightly above the red line. I have found with the mod the oil pressures do like to sit slightly high on occasion. The oil temperatures are coming up there, so hopefully we'll see the oil pressure start to reduce. We'll keep an eye on those. Fuel boost pumps are both selected off. For the lights, we'll just take the instrument lights on there, and the Avionics Master on as well, whilst we're up on the overhead. For the tail wheel, that is set to unlocked. We'll leave the parking brake on for now. We'll just configure the aircraft here before we commence the taxi. We've still got a bit of time here to sit and wait for those cylinder head temperatures to come up. So quick scan over the instruments, the altimeters are set, both indicating pretty much sea level down here on the ground in Milford Sound. HSI heading there about 175 and same there on the magnetic compass. Transponder is set to standby and we'll just wait here for the GNS 530, we can initialize that. So as I say we've got a bit of time here to kill as the engines warm up. In the meantime though, we can make a pretty gentle taxi here, down towards the uh, holding point for the westerly runway. We'll sit down at the holding point, wait for things to warm up there. So again, just waiting on that Garmin, we'll briefly set up a flight plan here. Out towards Gorge River airstrip. So we've got Gorge River airstrip. We'll go direct two, and we can activate that. It's all set and ready to go. Just coming gently back on the throttles here, you can kill the engines if you come back too quickly on the throttles whilst they're still warming up. Part brake can come off. Now we're rolling quite a tight taxi here as well on the ground in Milford Sound, but we do have a good trick up our sleeves in just a moment's time. All clear on the right. And just riding the brakes a little bit here to keep the aircraft nice and slow here for the turn. So we've got that direct to the Gorge River airstrip now in the GNS 530. We can set up the CDI later on once we're airborne, really just there to give us an estimated time of arrival. Anyway, as I say, a bit tricky here taxiing the Beach 18. So we'll just pop our head out the window here and we'll make our way down towards the holding point. Again, we're going to have a little bit of time here sat on the ground whilst the engines will come up to temperature before the run up. So we'll sit at the holding point, we'll wait for that. And once we carry out the run up, we'll get ourselves onto the runway and we can come back ready for the departure. Okay, so we are now lined up here on the westerly runway. Those cylinder temperatures now nicely up within the green band. 
All temperatures have just crept down a little bit again whilst we're sitting here, but the oil pressure is now looking good. We've carried out the run up, so happy to take the aircraft. In terms of the before takeoff checks, once again checking the flight controls. They are full and free. Mixtures are set through to fully rich, props are set through to high RPM. For the all colour shutters, we'll set those through to cold. And same there for the manifold heats, they're set cold. Flaps are selected up and indicating up. Fuel selectors are once again both on their respective main front tanks. The all bypass valves are both selected in. For the trims there on the elevator we've got neutral trim for the takeoff. And same there on the rudder. The directional gyro showing a heading there of 280. 280 on the magnetic compass and of course that does concur with the runway heading. As far as the flight instruments go, again just having a quick glance over all of those. Everything looking good. We'll check our fuel quantities again. Still showing about 7 tenths there in each main front tank. The car flaps we can open up in preparation for the takeoff. Fuel boost pumps are selected on. We'll take the landing lights on as well. Same for the nav lights, they can go through to flash. Peter heat is selected on. Transponder can go through to out. For the tailwheel lock there, we've now got the tailwheel locked up. For the takeoff power setting, we're looking for 36.5 inches manifold pressure. And we are all set, ready to go, so part brake off. Feeding in those throttles. And just using a little bit of braking initially to keep the aircraft straight. Looks like we do have a little bit of weather there out towards the west, so we might have to pick our way through that as we come out of the sound itself. So power is set. Nice little split there as well between the needles. Again, quite nice nuance with the engine modelling overall. Temperatures and pressures looking good. Just coming up through 80 knots. So climbing away initially at 100 knots. We do have positive climb. We'll tap the brakes and bring in the gear. We can start to turn straight away here as well out towards the northwest. Obviously to take us away from the high terrain. Just coming up through 500 feet, so we'll come back to our climb power setting. There we want 30 inches on the manifold pressure. And 2000 RPM. You'll notice as well the nice little split there between the two manifold pressure readings. So the engine's not behaving identically, which is always great to see. And we're out over the water now. Essentially clear of the high terrain, so we'll pitch for 120 knots here in the climb. We're not going to follow our GNS 530 guidance just yet. You can see that takes us straight over the high terrain, so we'll refine that once we're out over the water, out over the coastline. In terms of those temperatures and pressures, the cylinder head temperatures sitting pretty much bang on in the green band. All temperatures back in the green again now. Everything looking good. And once again, just an absolutely lovely aircraft to fly with the Tanark mod. Really nice sounds of those engines, particularly with the windows open as we have currently. And everything just behaving much more closely as to what you might expect. Particularly I find with the engine management, I think that's some of the best I've actually seen in the sim today in terms of the engine heating and cooling modelling. A really, really superb mod overall. Okay, we are trimmed pretty nicely now for 120 knots here in the climb. So running through our climb checks. The gear is selected up and indicating up. Flaps are the same. Selected up, indicating up. Manifold pressure, we have 30 inches set. For the props, we have 2000 RPM. Fuel boost pumps can come off. And same there as well for the landing lights. Good on the airspeed. And again, we'll just wait until we're out over the water here to refine our flight plan. We'll go direct to Gorge River once again. We'll just continue the climb here up to around 3,000 feet. We'll be off the coast, so we'll be clear of the high terrain. And hopefully as well, the weather's just going to be a little bit clearer out towards the south, so we should have slightly better conditions for making our approach into Gorge River. It's going to be pretty marginal as it is without having these somewhat low light conditions.
Just approaching 3,000 feet, so getting ready for the level off. One area where it feels to me as though the aircraft does still need a little bit of work is in pitch. The Beach 18 can still be fairly pitchy, particularly when you're out of trim. So there's 3,000, or just approaching. The cruise power setting we want 28 inches and 1850 on the RPMs. But we'll just hold climb power for now, build up some speed. Wait until we're up to around 140 knots. So good there now on the speed, we'll come back to 25 inches. And 18.50 on the RPM. And as I said, I just find the aircraft an absolute joy to operate now with those engine sounds. It's much more enjoyable, much more immersive. And those engines do feel much more true to life. As I say, some of the best engine modelling I've seen in the sim. It does look like we've got a bit of a break in the clouds out towards the south, so hopefully that's going to bode well for our arrival in Gorge River. But now again, they will just continue to track and follow the coastline. And we'll just wait until we're paralleling the coastline here, and then we'll go direct to again on the GNS 530. As you can see there, we've dropped the flight plan off the screen, so we'll just select that again later on. We should as well have all of the instrument lights on here, not quite sure why some of those weren't indicating correctly. Hopefully now that's brightened things up, you can see a little bit better what's going on. So we'll just sit here in the cruise, work our way down the coast there towards the sunshine. We're actually going to peel off just before Gorge River, we'll fly back around the side of the mountain. I'm sure many of you have seen the particular routing that we're going to fly at this point, but there's a really stunning arrival if you actually come down the river itself. So we'll continue down the coastline, we'll follow that. And then as I say, we've got a pretty nice challenging little landing actually to make into Gorge River. It's pretty marginal for the Beach 18. Should be good fun. Okay, so we are approaching the Gorge River Valley airstrip. As we discussed earlier on though, instead we're going to come in via the river. So you can see we've got the valley here off the nose. That heads off towards the east and also splits off towards the north. We're going to be taking the northern section of the valley here. And the plan, we're just going to follow the river inbound towards the airstrip. If you haven't seen this particular piece of scenery before, it's actually pretty beautiful, pretty spectacular. I'm sure though, as I say, that many of you have at this point. So we'll follow the river inbound towards Gorge Valley, and that'll take us pretty much straight over the runway. We'll peel off, have a quick look at the runway on the way past, check the visual condition, make sure there's no obstructions. And then we'll peel off for a right-hand turn, back around for a southerly approach, the wind slightly favouring the southerly runway today. So you can just about make out the river down there in the valley, probably quite tricky to make out in the video. We'll pick that up, and as I say, that'll lead us straight in towards the Gorge Valley airstrip itself. One last quick check of the T's and P's before we begin our river run. And again, everything in the greens, the all temps there just slightly on the low side. But we'll leave the all cooler shutters as they are for now going to be coming back in for the approach fairly shortly, so high power setting, low airspeed. And same there for the cylinder head temperatures, they're pretty well established within limits, but slightly on the cooler side. Beach 18, really enjoyable to hand fly as well. Obviously this is not the sort of thing you're going to be doing with the aircraft in real life. 
but I'm sure the aircraft over the years saw all sorts of manoeuvres out in the bush and various parts of the world. So although we are just having a little bit of fun here, I don't imagine it's all that far removed from certain roles in which the Beach A team would have been used. And we'll try and make our turns here as we follow the course of the river as gently as we can, avoid overstressing the airframe. And just coming down through 1500 feet. So picking up the course of the river, initially nothing particularly spectacular, but as you'll see in just a moment's time, it really does get rather beautiful in terms of the scenery design as we approach the airstrip. It's coming slightly back on the throttles there, maintaining 28 inches. And again, honestly, it might not be the most accurate flight model in the world, but I'm having a really enjoyable time here flying the Beach 18. Definitely there's been some improvements as well with the mod. It does make the aircraft a little bit nicer to hand fly, particularly during the takeoff, and all the more so I've found during the landing. With the default flight model, I can never get a half-decent landing out of the Beach 18, whereas now, hopefully today, I'll demonstrate something along those lines. It is going to be a bit tricky, though, with the short landing distance that we have available to us. So you can see some of the custom handcrafted scenery now. Even got little rock outcrops down there in the river. Once again, if you're really looking for realistic flight modelling, then DCS and Explain are better bets, but there's no other sim where you could do something even remotely as entertaining and as beautiful as this. I know it varies from simmer to simmer, but a lot of people seem to forget you can actually have fun in the sim as well. And accuracy doesn't always equate to having a good time. And the level of detail in this part of the world, in this particular airport, is just absolutely excellent. Once again, truly superb in terms of the scenery design. So just bleeding off a little bit of speed now as we level out. Those all temps are rather cool. And just coming out through the side of the hills, again we're going to come pretty much over top of the airstrip. We'll have a quick look on the way over as to the condition of the runway. So it all looks to be pretty clear, no obstacles that we can see there. Just go wings level momentarily. The upwind end looks good as well. This is just another combination in the sim though that is absolutely excellent. Both the aircraft with the mod I will say and also the scenery here coming together really nicely. So we'll just make a bit of a racetrack pattern approach here back onto the southerly runway. The wind is favouring the southerly runway which does bring about its own challenges. There's actually a couple of obstacles at the touchdown end of the southerly runway, but we do really need that headwind today with the Beach 18. They're maintaining 500 feet for now. We'll start coming back on the power. Below 139 knots we can take the gear, so we're good there on the speed, we'll take the gear down. And we'll just get the speed back into the white arc. And as we come back round onto final we'll take the flaps. Quite a bit of drag at flaps 45, so we won't take the flaps here too early. Till we're comfortable here that we've got plenty of energy in hand. And we're going to make the runway. Okay, so just coming around the corner. I'm pretty happy now with where we are. Speed just coming back into the white arc. We'll go all the way through to full flaps. Pitch can go back to fully fine. Undercarriage is confirmed down. Just on the flaps there to come out to 45 degrees. Flaps are checked. Obviously landing clearance not required. The runway was checked visually clear. And back up on those throttles again now. We really just want to hang the aircraft right on the edge of the stall speed. So just above 80 knots. And we may well hear the stall warning horn here just as we come into the flare on final approach. Not going to finesse the landing here too much either. We just need to get the beach down as quickly as we can. Get onto those brakes. And similarly, we need to keep the aircraft straight down the centre of the runway here. We don't have a whole lot of wingtip clearance. So you can see we've got the obstacles there at the touchdown end. Just clearing those off the throttles. Putting the aircraft onto the runway, straight onto the brakes. Keeping ourselves as central as we can. The aircraft really wanting to pitch over there, so all the way back on the yoke. Now we'll just get that side window opened up again.
We'll unlock the tail wheel. And as I say, pretty tight manoeuvring area here. So we'll just swing out to the right initially. Try and keep some speed up in the turn, avoid getting bogged down. Pull left on the rudder, using a little bit of left braking as well, just to tighten up the turn. And you can see the aircraft is just getting slightly bogged down there. So we'll just backtrack the runway down towards the departure end. We'll hold off on the afterland checklist until we've got the aircraft stationary. And we are going to depart again out of the airstrip at the end of the video just to prove that's possible. So we'll give ourselves as much runway as we can here, the departure. We really are going to need every inch of it that's available. So initially out to the right. Probably cutting the grass a little bit here as we go. Again, needing quite a lot of power here to get the aircraft around the turn. And we don't want to chew up any more runway here than we have to, so just getting the aircraft straight onto the brakes. Part brake is set. Bring the throttles back to around 1000 RPM. We'll lock up the tail wheel once again. And I'm running through that offline checklist, so the fuel boost pumps are off. That gang bar is very annoying. Quite easy to flick accidentally using the boost pumps. Landing lights can come off. Transponder is off. Props are set through to high RPM. Oil cooler shutters will leave as is. Laps can come up. Peter heat is off. And for the shutdown. Parking brake is set, Avionics Master is selected off. We'll shut down the right hand engine first. The shutdown is fairly abrupt, but the sounds are nice. So good shutdown there on the right, we'll do the same on the left. And good run down there on the left. So make sure it's both an idle cutoff. Magnetos are off, the one time I actually want the going bar to work. Battery generator switches are selected off. The tail wheel is locked. And we have a good shutdown here on the ground in Gorge River. So there you go guys. I do hope you enjoyed our New Zealand adventure in the Danark Beechcraft 18 mod. As I'm sure you can tell throughout the flight, I think the Danark mod is an absolutely superb overhaul for the Beech 18 overall. Makes the aircraft far more enjoyable, far more detailed. As we discussed during the startup process, the real focus of the Danark mod seems to be with regards to engine modelling. There are a number of other areas though adjusted on the aircraft, so we'll just briefly run through some of those. Firstly, the weight and balance of the entire aircraft has been adjusted to more accurately represent the real world Beach 18. As far as I could tell from the mod guide, there's no significant overhaul to the flight modelling of the aircraft, but already with the correct weight and balance, it seems to make a huge difference to how the Beach 18 flies. The aircraft is now much more controllable during the takeoff in terms of directional control and on the landing as well much easier to get a decent flare out of the aircraft, a decent touchdown thereafter. The fuel system has been overhauled both in terms of having correct positioning of the tanks, also more accurate in terms of the boost pump operation. The engine oil system has received a drastic overhaul there. Again you have heating and cooling modelled as well as depletion of the oil levels, oil leaks are also modelled on the aircraft. And low oil quantities or loss of engine oil will result in engine damage, ultimately engine failure as well. We didn't get much of a chance to see it during the flight, but the oil cooler shutters will actually affect oil temperature. The oil bypass valves as well, same there, they work correctly. If you pull those, you will actually see a more rapid rise in the oil temp. So really nice modelling there. The same as well with engine wear and damage. The engines will wear down over time, you can damage them, and that will depend on how you operate the aircraft. Failure, for example, to let the oil temperatures or the cylinder head temperatures warm up, you are more likely to damage the engines, certainly you'll wear them down more rapidly. I've also seen rather nicely modelled carb icing, which again can lead to a loss of power. As far as the engine damage modelling goes as well, it's not necessarily always instantaneous and catastrophic. You'll often see temperatures creeping up or a gradual loss of power, so again, nice nuance to the engine modelling overall, it makes the aircraft feel very much more realistic. The mod also comes with a custom sound set, which I'm sure you'll have noticed throughout the flight. The engine sounds are noticeably improved internally. You get a really nice change in engine note, depending on the particular window that's open. 
and personally I really like the engine sounds with the side windows open as we had for the first half of the flight. Lastly as well you also get the option to have either the standard tailwheel steering or you can also go for a castering tailwheel, adding just that little bit more authenticity to the Beach 18. So all in all an absolutely superb mod from Denark and a huge thank you to them for all of their hard work. If you already own the Beechcraft 18 then I highly recommend going and checking out the mod and if you were perhaps on the fence before regarding purchasing the aircraft then certainly for me this is another great reason to consider the Beach 18 once again. Once again I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you did then please do consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel then please consider subscribing as well. If you'd like to help support the channel then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. And as always a huge thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are, take really good care and I will see you all again soon.